Hello and welcome to Ula Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Gemini. If Gemini is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. All right, let's get started. And so... We have the Nine of Cups tonight, which has everything to do with happiness. Not too shabby. Okay, you stay right there. Okay, and let's see what these tea leaves have to say tonight. And so if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit the little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It is free to subscribe. And so immediately I'm seeing we have this kind of little image up here. It's, it's actually kind of cute. Um, TT, no, not with your tail. Okay. So we have, it looks like a person in a window, okay, kind of looking down, and then we have a person holding a flower, kind of right in here. If you can see the little person and the flower, we have the person in the window, we have kind of a dove up here, uh, maybe another rose. Uh, so I do feel like there's a sense of courtship. And now this doesn't have to be romantic, although it does look kind of romantic. Um, and it doesn't have to be with another human being, um, although it could be. Um, but I do think that this could really kind of be about uh, your love of the divine, of God, of goddess, of... Um, you know, whatever um, kind of intelligence or entity or um, icon or whatever it is that you have a kind of belo a beloved union, okay? Um, now, with the flowers, we have two roses. Um, this really does feel like a sense of awakening to these kind of deeper spiritual understandings. And... I feel that this is kind of in the realm of, um, of agape, of this kind of idea that love is religion, right? Or love is the religion. Um, you know, or when somebody says, love is my religion, um, there's, there is this sense of coming into a place in your life where it's like, um, I'm kind of tired of feeling so negative and afraid of everything. Every day I wake up and I find many reasons to be let down, to feel like things are going terribly, that this is not enough, that, um, you know, uh, I've been kind of dealt uh, a bad hand or whatever it is. And I think that you have this feeling of like, I'm, I'm here looking, you know, I'm in the window looking out and seeing um, the world go by. It almost kind of is a feeling of, um, you know, when you're a kid and all of your friends from the neighborhood are outside playing and you're sick or maybe you're, um, you know, grounded or something and you look out and you think, like, this is the worst thing in the world. You know, I'm missing out on the best fun. Um, you know, but I think that uh, this feeling uh, has not subsided um, in some time. So it's kind of like I think you're coming to this place of awareness that it's not just going to go away. You're not going to sleep this off. This is something that... Um, has deeper roots and you kind of have to decide to be proactive about how are you going to um, engage with your own life? How are you going to perceive things? Um, are they always going to make you upset? Are you always going to have your feelings? Hurt? Are you always going to feel like you are being personally attacked and these kinds of things? And listen, I understand because I feel I have to fight this, these feelings constantly, um, you know, and remind myself most of the time 
um, the things people do say and, and, um, you know, whatever, the way that they behave. Come over here. Come on. Over here. Away from the plant, please. Come on. Come on, mama. No, no. Over here. E T T, come on. T T, come on, come on. Um, you know, and I think that you just you're coming to this place where you realize that you know you have to do something or it's not going to change. And it's like, you know, it's not easy. And and I I like I said, I struggle with this a lot too. I get into my stinking thinking a lot. Um, so I do feel that there is this real movement here to, for you um, towards looking, um, looking for the good, looking for reasons to um, feel that you should be, you know, feeling grateful that my goodness, you know, despite it all, um, there are reasons to, uh, to love. There are reasons to, um, feel that I am, you know, a chosen child of this, of this divinity. TT. Oh, these, these cats, they just, they run my life. <laughs> um, and so, we have that dove, and it is. It's a sense of peace coming into your life. Um, and it is this, these, the roses, the, the secrets of being. Um, and it is so much about perspective. But now, when you're in a place where it all feels just hard and icky, and there's grief and, and um, struggle and... and you know, suffering going on, you hear somebody say this and it's like, lady, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, I, I get it. <laughs> I have felt the same way plenty of times in my life. Um, and I will again, I'm sure. Um, but I do feel that from the bottom of my heart, um, that it really is so much about how, how we interact with our own life. Um, are we going to let ourselves kind of unravel? Um, you know, every time something goes wrong or there, the circumstances are not in our favor or, um, you know, we just, we just can't figure out exactly what the next move is. Um, and I will tell you, you know, there have been times in my life where I was just barely making it you know, financially, um, emotionally, spiritually, um, just kind of going through the motions of feeding myself, taking care of my animals, working, and that's about it, right? Um, but it does. It does come together at points, and there are openings there um, where we, you know, we have to decide, am I going to take this opportunity to really invest in myself, in my in my self evolution, am I going to, um, you know, study uh, the things that speak to me? Am I going to look for um, these systems or techniques of uh, mindfulness and and spirituality, connection, and um, you know, whatever it is? I don't promote any one thing. Um, there, I do have some of my. Uh, favorites for myself, but I'm not aligned with anything. I don't belong to anything and I never will. Um, but, you know, we have to find things that, that make us feel something. Um, you know, I like Jung a lot, Carl Jung's work. I like all of it, not all of, but I like a lot of his students and um, you know, kind of contemporaries within um, imaginative alchemy and spiritual psychotherapy and, you know, these kinds of things. Um, 
where there's a, a lot of overlap, right? Uh, and, and his techniques, really, really useful. Um, active imagination being one of my favorite. Um, really good for kind of working through scenarios in our interior landscape, going in there and finding you know, just so much information about ourselves and about the nature of being. Um, you know, I, I really am partial to Castaneda and, um, and, uh, well, a lot of people I, you know, I could go on and on and on, but, um, I, my point really is, is to find things that, that make sense to us. Go and read, listen to audio books, watch YouTube videos, um, you know, just treat life like you are in college, right? There are so many resources out there um, and in your quest for understanding, you will, you will encounter so many things that are going to kind of widen your perception of life and reality. It also it makes it easier to kind of loosen the grip on um, this kind of need to uh, live in our, our thought loops, our, the cycles of, of how we exist, the self-mythology we tell ourselves, you know. Um, for me, for years, it was like my parents died when I was young, when I was 11 and 12. I grew up in a house of addiction and... Um, and they, my parents were wonderful people, um, in their own right, you know, the, in aspects of them, they were human beings, so they were flawed, right? Um, and I, there was abuse in not just my home, but around, you know, it, it was rampant in the life that I grew up in, um, among, you know, not only myself, but my peers and, um, and so I was not unique in that way, unfortunately. And um, I went on in my life, you know, I had a lot of other things happen. But I always, and I still do, you know, kind of, I, I get into these modes of thinking about my self-mythology, thinking about um, the histories of my experience and thinking, well, I'm an orphan and, and, um, and I, and I was victimized and I was abused and, and I was hurt and nobody protected me like they should have. And, um, you know, and, and all these things are true. Um, but when I tell myself these things, when I'm facing other hardships, um, it becomes a spiral of, of, thinking of feeling um descent right into a place that i don't know how to always crawl out of um and so i had learned that i have to i have to alter my interior dialogue i have to talk to myself um as though uh i'm the person that survived all these things i'm the person that not only survived i have um, lived a lot of different iterations of self. Um, I've lived in different parts of the country. I've done different kinds of jobs. Um, you know, I've, I've loved and I, I've, you know, been a very singular person and now I have a family and, you know, what, lots of different things. And, um, and in reminding myself, of what's important when I am faced with something that makes me feel out of control or it is triggering, I have this different self-talk in there and it, it lends me a lot of support. And so I know I'm talking a lot about myself here, but I want you to know that I see you, we have seven, we have seven, we have a seven, another seven, I mean, just sevens all over this thing. And to me, that means that you are somebody who is creating your own luck. You are somebody who, um, you know, is caring and empathetic towards self. Whatever you have been through, whatever hurts have happened, traumas have happened, um, you know, that there's no minimizing that. Uh, but I think that you 
have been through these things and you have decided that I am going to do something with myself despite it all. Um, you know, I've had this maybe like a terrible um, divorce or, uh, you know, you have a child that you, you love and you've raised them and, and, um, and they're going through a phase where, um, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of spite against you or feeling like you, um, you know, didn't do enough for them and however that could be right. And, um, but at the same time, you know, you know that this is only a, a perception and this is only a, one small fragment of the story. Um, and it's not going to knock you down because you, you are the architect of your own life, of your own happiness, of your own ability to make your own luck, right? To find the luck, to make the luck, uh, to be the luck, right? <laughs> to fully embody um, that energy. And you are doing that. And you are absolutely... Um, I feel like coming into this place of just evolving into, um, you know, the light being that you've always been, you've always, you have always been, but it's just emanating from you, right? And you are doing work that is important. Um, I see we have an onk right here. Um, and there is a sense of this kind of connection to everlasting life to that very core element that brings, um, you know, the, the animating factor to all things. And um, it flows through um, every part of your life. And there is, a, there is an abundance of these emotional waters as well coinciding together and I think that really makes you such a powerful person um you I think you the way that you express yourself is beautiful and unique I think that people are absolutely enamored with you um there's a a kind of just a an intelligence a delight um a charm to you uh, I almost wonder if you have like a really kind of unique way of speaking, um, maybe like a, an accent or um, just kind of like your cadence or, or something, you know, it's, it feels quite unique. And I think people um, really are just kind of transfixed by, um, it's, it's almost kind of enchanting, I think. Um, you have a beautiful voice, I think, or something, the way you speak, maybe you write, it could be the way you write. Um, but yeah, there, there's something with the communication. Um, and I keep looking at this, we have a cactus right here. Okay. So, um, when I see anything about the desert, we have the triad here. Um, Oh, and then we have a person kind of planting. Okay. Oh, and we have a woodpecker right there. Look at the woodpecker. I just saw a woodpecker today. Um, I took pictures of it. I should post them. Um, of a, uh, what is it? A red-bellied um, woodpecker. Anyway, so, <laughs> and that was, I'm sorry. I'm so, I love watching the birds. And I'm no expert, but I get very excited about it. Um so we have the cactus. I feel like there, when I see anything about the desert, I know that this is a time of immense visitation um, in your dreams, having vision, some kind of intelligence, maybe a guardian angel, um, maybe some kind of guide. Uh, it could be ex extraterrestrial or kind of a macrobe or the muse. Um, but it's something that is coming to you and you are having interactions with it. Okay, um, now we have, uh, we have the pyramid or the triad here, um, really divinity in full, right? And very alive in your life. Spirit is 
so potent. And, um, and I do, I feel like you are absolutely devoted to the work surrounding spirit. Um, and that is, and that is part of really what is bringing in this, this, these eyes to see that luck come into manifestation for you. And I keep seeing this, that I'm like, gosh, there's like hitting it, really hitting a jackpot here, right? Um, so then we also have a person planting. So I feel like you are in a place where, um, you know, you are definitely kind of sowing the seeds, tending to your gardens, um, getting something going for yourself, working on, um, how you're making money. Um, and I think that it's really, it's taking hold. You're doing really well. And, um, and I think that also, uh, kind of brings that happiness into um, your experience, definitely. So I think money things, not too shabby, um, really kind of making a name for yourself in the work that you're doing um, and feeling confident, I believe, really confident there. Okay. Oh, and the woodpecker. Yes, the woodpecker. So diligently working, right? And I think that's really the thing here. Really kind of, if you've ever watched a woodpecker, if you've ever listened to the woodpeckers, they um, spend quite a bit of time um, getting their holes going and and um, looking for the, the insects they're looking for. And so I can see that you... Um, really, once you kind of have your sights fixed on something, you're going to make it happen. Okay, so we have somebody in a meditative state, which I imagine is you. We have the heart, we have the heart. Um, so there is the sense of agape. I mean, it's just through the whole thing here. Um, the beloved, the, uh, this, this idea of kind of, um, finding a deep love within self, an aspect of self, um, within self, having kind of the divine manifesting for you in the form of a being. Um, so what does that mean? It seems <laughs> kind of confusing. Um, almost like if you are having dreams and you've ha been having like the same, um, the same person show up in your dreams for a long period of time. And there is a connection. There is a love. There is a partnership, a kinship. It feels like a family member. And as you kind of bring this, these dreams into a place like active imagination or um, kind of a contemplative state, and you look over them, you start to realize that this is maybe an aspect of self. This is maybe the anima or animus and, um, and they are showing up in your, um, you know, most sacred place in your dream world. <coughs> and there is a devotion to one another there. Um, and it can sound confusing, but I also, and this is my own personal um, kind of belief about this is that this is an aspect of the divine kind of being shown to us. Um, we have this idea of chemical marriage, right? The alchemical marriage, the chemical marriage, um, this union of opposites. And, and now it can get very tricky because it is kind of gender based in some way, but, um, I, I don't know. That's all that is, doesn't, it's all kind of blurry for me at this point with all that. But what I do know is this idea of, um, being with a, um, aspect of self or, um, an intelligence, a being and knowing so sharply that there is a love that is unbreakable there. It doesn't matter the details of it. There is a union, a devotion, a, um, you know, kind of, a um, some thing that is, it is a love that is beyond love. 
okay and um and this is that divine manifesting this is kind of like our little our little brains <laughs> that we have that you know aren't aren't um firing on all cylinders yet we haven't gotten to that point yet um evolutionary wise but um you know it is a way for us to understand to perceive um, something that is ineffable, something that is um, impossible, maybe, maybe impossible. At least in this moment, it is hard to begin to grasp the immensity. Um, but that uh, little fragment of this infinitely divine thing showing up in these places in our interior thinking and in our in our in our holy temple that resides within ourself and it becoming something that is um, a person that we can relate to that we can look upon and see this is somebody I love this is somebody I know this is um, you know this is my part of my heart right um, this is something that we can grasp this is something that we can that we can um, do something with, right? Um, and I, I think of this, these kinds of exercises. This is, I mean, this is a work of an initiate, but also not unlike um, the work of the saints, the, the saints of the ecstasy and the saints of, um, you know, that that find um, marriage to their um, to their God. And, uh, you know, and also Jesus, um, in the case of the saints. So, um, you can think of, uh, like St. Teresa, right? Having this interior landscape, being married to, um, and devoted to, uh, this most divine, um, persona, I guess, icon and, um, having a fully sacred marriage, um, now a lot of this exists in the interior. Um, these are, you know, within dreams, within visions, within, um, profound revelations and fits of ecstasy. And, um, you know, this is not reserved only for, um, religious people or people who, um, you know, are initiated and, and serve within religious communities or occult communities or any, any, it's for, it's accessible to us all. Um, so I can see that, uh, there is a sense of going into a place and beginning some of this work, um, going into, um, you know, whatever it is, what, whatever these landscapes are that you have personally, um, finding the, these beings within yourself. And, um, and so I'm interested, you know, if you have had dreams, go ongoing dreams, um, and you have somebody that you know within your dreams. Now it could even manifest as somebody from your life, you know, um, a sibling or, um, uh, somebody you dated when you were young or, you know, somebody that you have loved from afar or whatever it is. Um, it would make sense that, yeah, they would have, um, you know, a face or features that, um, that are familiar, right? And now let me just say that it doesn't have to be a romantic kind of love. Now it, it is a close love and it is a love that is expansive and all encompassing. So there can be aspects that definitely feel romantic. Um, but you know, it doesn't, that doesn't always have to be the case. So I'm interested. I'm always, I love hearing about people's stories of these kinds of occurrences and coming to the understanding that this is maybe something that it is. Um, I can't tell you how many people I've talked to um, where, you know, we're discussing uh, repetitive dreams or, um, you know, different uh uh, personas that kind of show up in their dreams and, and then coming to this, this understanding, yeah, I've kind of had this like, uh, long story with this, with this being since I was probably pretty young and it's, you know, kind of over the years it's, it's changed and, 
And maybe they've even looked different in my dreams, but I know you know the feeling of them, right? So um, it's one of it's something that I I am always very kind of drawn to, uh, definitely. So let's go ahead and look at these lightness of being affirmation cards, and these are the Earth element. Uh, I'm going to flip through, and I'll stop where it feels right. Looks like somebody's face. And it says, Epiphany, blessings, blessings of grandparent, medicine, soul songs, walk on earth with bare feet. Walk on earth with bare feet. Now, grandparent medicine really is, it is that utterly devoted love, right? The unconditional love um, praise, devotion, um, you know, part of the, the kind of love we experience, hopefully, um, that makes us feel like we are a worthwhile being in those, you know, first very formative years, the things that, um, that we experience with, uh, with our family, with our parents, our, our grandparents, the way that they love us, the way they talk to us. Um, you know, hopefully if we are blessed, that really is, um, the medicine of our lives. Right. And, and something I read that just, I mean, it makes sense, but it, it blew my mind because I, I am so, um, in these last years, I've been so devoted to the work of changing my, um, internal dialogue. But something that I read is that, uh, children's internal dialogue is mirrors the way that you are spoken to um by your caretakers by your parents by your um their you know your grandparents your teachers um and so if you know they're telling you, you you're smart you're worthwhile you're doing a good job you're you know really proud of you and um, you know, let me help, let's problem solve together and figure that, you know, these kinds of, um, these kinds of, uh, working together and, and encouragement and, and all these, that becomes the internal dialogue, um, versus, you know, and, and listen, I'm the parent of a, a taught, well, she's a preschool kid now. Um, and yeah, you get frustrated and you don't do that. That's not good. Don't, you know, whatever. And I have to remind myself that, um, I, I gotta, I gotta stop being so uptight about things because, um, you know, ultimately I don't, I don't want my daughter to be afraid of life. I don't want her to be afraid of making mistakes or, or, um, you know, challenging, um, the, the constraints of things. I want her to be creative and a little bit rebellious and, and, um, you know, somebody who is, is brave and, and willing to go exploring and all that. So, um, yeah, that's, that's something that I try to keep in mind. Definitely, definitely, definitely. All right, Jim and I am going to go ahead and tell you I love you because I do. And I thank you so much for spending this time with me. It's always such an honor to be able to bring these messages to you. Uh, if you would be so kind as to like the video, it does help the channel so much. And if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit the little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. And um, it's free to subscribe. If you'd like to leave a comment, please do. I read them all. Um, I'm a little behind. <laughs> I have been reading them, but I need to go in, um, and react and, and heart and leave messages and stuff. It's just been a wild one over here. I'm just going to tell you that <laughs> between being sick and moving and, um, we have some, I don't know, just things going on and, uh, I feel very blessed. I'm also very tired. <laughs> I'm so worn out. <clears throat> so I'm doing my best, but I want you to know I do read them and, um, and they are 
ever so important to me. So, um, happy mini, there's holidays, 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 and festivals and, and, um, celebrations happening, um, you know, for the next few weeks. And so I want to tell you happy Ramadan, happy Easter, happy, you know, spring, fall festivals. Um, I know Passover is coming up in the next month here. Um, I don't, I try not to miss any of the major holidays. Um, you know, I, I've said this before. I, I celebrate as many holidays as I can, even if they are things that, um, you know, as I've said also, is I'm not a religious person necessarily. I love, love partaking, um, but don't, um, I have no affiliation to anything. Uh, I just enjoy all of the celebrations. I enjoy the grace and love and, and togetherness and, um, and the teachings and, and everything else. Um, so, uh, these little, these times when there's a lot of intersecting, um, holidays and, and, um, and feasts and, and all of that happening. Oh, I'm just a happy girl. <laughs> I am a happy girl. Uh, so, um, I hope that you all have wonderful, um, whatever it is that you do. And, um, and I love you and take care of yourself. Please be safe. Take care of one another. And, um, and we'll talk in just a few days from now. Okay. Good night.